I just got this from an auction house. It's in pretty rough shape. There's a sticker right there that says six dollars. I did not pay six dollars for that, unfortunately. So it's animated or motorized. Got a fluorescent bulb. And it's supposed to have a scroll that goes back and forth to different displays. As you can see, not working too well. First thing I need to do is get this apart. See what we got going on here. This is beat up pretty bad. I paid way too much money for this than I should have. But too late, got it now. Let's get this cover off. And hopefully it's just the cover being out of whack and um, causing the problem. Now that background noise you hear is my uh, 7.3 diesel truck running. It's got a foot of ice on it. Okay, this is uh, nicked up pretty bad here. I can probably get some uh, different plexiglass. I don't know. I don't know how much money I want to throw at this right now. Hopefully. It was just a cover binding this up. <sighs> I forgot that one don't work. Oh, there we go. Somebody put a nail in there. That was it. That's an easy one to fix. I don't know why somebody put a nail in there. Well, it goes right to golfing too. I'm going to guess this is from the 60s or 70s. Looks like he's got a wooden shaft there too. Yeah, I think I'm just going to... It's got a lot of pieces missing on it. I don't want to get into remaking stuff. This is just going to go on the wall in a pole barn. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just cleaning this thing up the best I can and um, getting it back together. And what I'm going to try to do is I, I've got the cotter pin in here. I'm going to uh, plug this back in and I want to get rid of some of these uh, folds that are in here. So I'm just going to lightly hit this with the heat gun and see if that's going to help because this is a laminate and it looks like it started to delaminate. There's also a spring on this end that's pulling all this together. Yeah, that's hot enough. And hopefully if I can heat all this up, it'll pull the, uh, pull the folds right out of this. And we'll see how that goes. Not all the seams have folds in it, so I'm assuming. Yeah, look at it, it's laying flat. This is working. This is working. Nice. Well, I thought, uh, slept on it and thought about it. Some pretty big holes in here. I put tape on the back side. I went down into the, the old basement and I found this monstrosity that I've been holding on to for almost 30 years. And I stopped working in the 90s. Um, it's a source of plastic now. Don't ask me why. I didn't throw it away. But I just found a reason to keep it. So there should be enough plastic that I can get out of this. And then I can... Uh, plastic weld these big holes in so we're gonna see how that goes yeah that's an old printer well it took about 10 minutes i got some bonus out of this not only did i get plastic i got some uh, dowel rod um 
I'll use that as a weld medium. And I've got some springs and some gear wheels there that I will use at another project down the line because every now and then I get something that's got a, a plastic uh, gear wheel that's broken. <clears throat> when you get into small stuff like this, a lot of that stuff's standard. Okay, uh, off to cutting and welding. Yeah, I'm uh, going to attack the biggest hole first. Um, piece of plastic had a rib in it, believe it or not, right where that one is, so this is going to work. It's got a little lip here too. What I'm going to do is use this lip, um, just kind of guide it in a little bit. Um, I'll come back and uh, sand it off later. So I need to trace the part that I'm going to cut off here. Doesn't have to be exact, but the pencil is not what I need. Okay, I gotta have a, a better tool in here than that. Well. See if this will work. That'll work. There, that'll work. I'm gonna cut to the outside of the line the best I can. I want to get this line as close as I can to the edge of this so that I can squeak it into place. Okay, off to cutting that out. piece to where it almost fits in there but I've got some uh, some edges on here that I didn't quit quite to the line so I'm going to use a deburring tool just to clean up some of these edges like I said I left that tab on the, the that rise tab on there so it'll help hold it in place while I go to solder or to fuse it together. Uh, that one's left a little bit high here. It doesn't have to be exact, but I do not want to force this apart. Okay, I'm tight right here. problem. There's a little bit of pointed edge on this that's causing the problem. Okay, I'll just get in here. I don't want to put too much pressure on this because I don't want to break it. Too. It's better to go a little bit bigger with it and just dial it in than to go too small. I don't have too many printers laying around I can take apart for plastic. Let's see, 
where is it at? It's right here. You ever wonder why you have to pay so much to have stuff fixed? It's the time. Okay. That'll do it. I'll have to solder in that in now. Yeah, what I'm done with this is uh, I've got a smaller uh, zip tie and I'm coming in and actually using it as like a filler rod to get down into that crack since it's not a tight fit I'm being careful to make sure that that's pushed down onto the bed plate so that it's uh, pretty much even on the bottom side I'm going to go through and take my time and do that and I'll get back to you and I got it uh, got it in I'm gonna come back on the back side um, after I get all these uh, pieces done and use a clear epoxy to fill in the back side of the cracks and smooth it out a little bit um, so far so good well I got this corner made up right here there you go it's in pretty good. I left it overhang on uh, the end to fill in that gap right there. Uh, let's get the uh, plastic well. Okay, I'm onto the corner. There's the lid to the printer. It's got a built in corner right there. That one should go quite well. That one literally took five minutes. So uh, I've got that piece that piece the corner piece here and there just some uh, smaller pieces winding it into then i'm going to go back like i said on the outside i'm going to epoxy get into those gaps do a light sanding and then i'll repaint over that i don't know if i'm going to paint the whole thing or not i like the patina on it of the 40 years of cigar smoke when whatever bar this came from so, we'll see how it goes. Well, get this corner piece fabricated. It's gonna look pretty good once I get it in. It's getting there, it is getting there. Okay, now what I've done is I've got the double bubble epoxy out. I've come in from uh, the other side and I'm basically just uh, using it like a filler filling in the cracks, trying to level it a little bit so that when I go to paint it, you're not gonna be seeing these jagged ridges. This isn't the fast drying stuff. So I'm gonna probably let this set up overnight and then come back and hit the other side. That one taping, use the blue or the green tape. It won't leach in and um, I don't care how new you think that is if it's on there you've used it before and it's going to need to be replaced especially when trying to cut some fine lines in these tape it's peeling it over the edge here tucking it in because uh i'm not going to paint this i want to keep that look i just want to paint where the repairs were done and then i'm going to change the color of the gold because I can't find any gold in that color so that is going to be what that is first I'm going to tape it off then I'll put some paper over it it's getting the fine edging in first that uh, I don't want to get that mixed up with the new ones that's important get your edge lines on right so that you don't have to come back and cut them there's no need to do added work I 
Uh, this is going to need, need two pieces of tape here. Uh, there, I can do that. I'll just come back and trim this. I think you get the idea of what I got going on here. So I'll get back to you when I get it all taped off. Remember, shaky, shaky, shaky. You don't know how long this has been on the shelf. Now I can really see Where this needs some attention. I'm just putting a light coat of this primer on and it's going to show me what needs to be done. And I've got a way to take care of that pretty quickly. I'm not putting a lot of primer on where I didn't do any work. Oh yeah. This ain't fast driving or drying. Yeah, this is really making the imperfection stick out. fat fingerprint is on this. Sure enough, right there. Okay. Let's let this dry. Remember to do this. It stops your tips from plugging up. And nobody likes their tip plugged up. Trust me. Not a good feeling. Normally I'd be using spot putty for this, but I can't find it. So I'm just going to use some spackle. This thing isn't going to be doing any moving and flexing and any crazy stuff the way a tar would be. So I'll, I guess I really don't need the spot putty. I'll just fill in the low spots with this. And uh, this will be easier to sand too. A lot easier to sand. I'll take care of those little gouges. Yeah, this stuff should be dry in 10 minutes, so be able to move forward with this pretty quickly like I said when I get done with this you'll never know that I uh, welded some plastic into this oh, this is dry it's got a rough side and a not so rough side hit it with the rough side first Standing a lot better than the body filler would be. So I guess I'm glad that I uh, can't find my body filler because this is saving me time. So wherever you see white, that's a low spot. I'm just got to go around and do this where I repaired it. A couple more coats of uh, primer and uh, do a light sand on the primer and then start painting. Well, I've got this uh, started to be sanded. 
I've got 400 grit on here. This is uh, not going to be museum quality, so I'm not worried about it. But uh, there's the uh, again. You can see where the repairs have been taking place. And you can't even tell from this side that the repairs have taken place. After I get done block sanding this here, I'm going to do the white first and then I'll come back, tape it off and do the gold. There's a little low spot right there. But if I keep on block sanding it, that spot will slowly disappear. There's another low spot here. Like I said, not museum quality. But a lot better than what it was. Uh oh. What do we got here? Well, number one, it's the wrong color. And number two, I got something funky going on with the primer. Let me, uh, yeah, this is not the color I wanted, I don't think. I tried to get a color that would match the patina of cigarette smoke. But I definitely got something going on here. Let me peel this up, see if it matches the color. Oh, no, not at all. Okay. So that paint's going on the shelf for another day. Well, I got the proper white paint on. Got it taped off. And I'm gonna get a little wild. Ooh boy. This stuff is creating a mess. But if it goes on good, this is gonna look pretty cool. Oh. Got it on a little thick there. Let me put on a couple light coats on this and uh, get back to you. Well, it's ready to go together. The key is that rotating film scape can't touch the front. going on here it's a tight fit that's for sure come on get on there it's giving me fits and I don't know why I did a, I did a snug fit earlier this side that's causing the problem. I don't want to get too aggressive with it. There it goes. There we go. Up and running. Fishing, golfing, skiing. All while you drink Falstaff. If you remember how bad it is, I'm sure you do. I just got to put a screw in there to find a brass screw. Can of primer, can of white paint, can of glitter, and a discarded printer, and a few hours of time. <laughs>